Good morning and welcome to the introduction to English speech sounds and the modern English structure. We are in the middle of the discussion of the consonantal sounds. Just to have you recapitulate, the three term label to describe a consonantal sound would be whether it is voiced or voiceless depending upon whether the vocal cords are vibrating or not. The second is the place of articulation which will be determined by the active as well as passive articulators articulating with each other to produce the sound and accordingly we have a number of terminology bilabial if both the lips are involved labiodental if the lip and the teeth are involved dental if both the teeth are involved alveolar if the tip of the tongue and the teeth ridge or the alveolar ridges involved palato alveolar if the hard palate as well as the alveolar ridge are involved in the production of the speech sounds palatal if only the hard palate is involved velar if the tip of the soft palate or the soft palate is involved in the production of the sound and glottal where glottis which is the opening between the two vocal cords are involved the third description that you could find for a consonantal sound is the manner of articulation the manner of articulation is also called as the stricture because it tells us the way in which the air that is coming out from the lungs passes through either the mouth or the nose or whatever. Accordingly, we have the plosive, whereupon we said the active articulator makes a firm contact with the passive articulator to close the oral passage of air, as a result of which the air is held up for some time and is released with an explosion. Hence, it is called as plosive. Then we have the affricates. This also we discussed. Definitely, the active as well as passive, articulate, passive articulators come very close to each other to close the oral cavity. But the active articulator gets separated from the passive articulator slowly, releasing the air that is held up within the oral cavity with a slight friction. The third that could be possible is nasals that we discussed in the previous section. Under the section of nasals, we said, for the first time, we could find the soft palate getting lowered so that the air can pass through the nose. Somewhere in the oral cavity, the obstruction is observed by an active contact being made by the active articulator with the passive articulator. As in plosives, affricates and nasals, the oral cavity is completely blocked or closed. They are called as top consonants. In the case of nasals, the air passes through the nose because the soft palate is lowered. In this section, we shall be talking about fricatives. And fricatives are called so because the stricture that is maintained is what is called as the close approximation stricture, whereupon the active articulator comes very close to the passive articulator, leaving a small gap in between so that the air that is coming out from the lungs can pass through the mouth. Obviously, the soft palate would be raised, excepting for nasals, for the rest, the soft palate will be raised. Then we have lateral frictionless continuous, continuant and semi vowels, which we will be discussing in the following videos. Today, in this video, let us talk about the fricatives in English. Fricatives are the friction consonants which are produced with number one, the soft palate is raised to shut off the nasal passage of air. Number two, the stricture that is maintained is close approximation stricture, which would mean that the active articulator is brought very close to the passive articulator so that the gap that is present between them is very narrow and the air can escape through this narrow gap with audible friction. That's why they are called as fricatives. So in fricatives, the audible friction is to be heard. There are nine fricatives in English. For, v, for, Z, 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 Sh, Z, and H. Of these nine fricatives in this video today, we shall be talking about four, the, the, the first four fricatives. And in the next video tomorrow, we shall be talking about the rest of the five, Z, Z, Sh, Z, and H. Let's move on. The very first fricative that we have is, yes. Get the lower lip very, very close to the upper teeth. Leave a small gap in between. 
so that the air that is coming out from the lungs passes through this small gap with an audible friction. You should be in a position to hear the friction. That's right. For the articulation of the sound f as in fan, the soft palate is raised to shut off the nasal passage of air. The lower lip comes very close to the upper teeth to form a narrow space through which the air that is coming out from the lungs passes with an audible friction. The vocal cords are drawn apart during the articulation of the sound and hence the three term label for describing the sound as in fan is voiceless because vocal cords do not vibrate labiodental because the lower lip and the upper teeth are involved in the production of the sound and fricative because a narrow gap is left so that the air that is coming out from the lungs passes through it with friction. Very good. Distribution wise in English it occurs in all the three positions initial, medial as well as the word final positions. As you find in the example of F A R FA initial position a f t e r after after medial position and h a l f l is silent here half half that's right the problem that we could find for some of the speakers is the fur which is labiodental the lower lip and the upper teeth should come closer to each other to produce the sound many a times it happens with bilabial that's because in hindi or marathi we have per ya per used in place with each other they are allophones so we can call f l o w e r in hindi as phool phool bheja tha ya phool phool bheja tha both the pronunciations phool and phool are same in hindi or many a times in the sanskrit derived languages but fool or pool are not same in English because fur and per in Hindi or in Marathi are allophones. One can be used in place of another without resulting in the change of meaning. But in English, fur is a fricative and per is a plosive and they are phonemes which result in the change of the meaning. So take a very good note of the pronunciation of fur. It can never be pronounced with bilabial. It's a labiodental sound. So, F A N, it is not pan, it is fan. Right? F I V E, it is not five, it is five. F O U R, it is not four, it is four. So, practice it and you will get it. Let's practice with some examples from English. F W -E, e D, feed. F I T, fit. F E N C E, fence. F A T, fat. F A R M, farm. F O N D, font. F O R C E, force. F O O T, foot. F O O D, food. F U N, fun. F I R and F U R, both are pronounced as fur, the central long diphthong. F A I L, the diphthongs begin. F I R and F U R, the central long vowel. The diphthongs begin from here after. F A I L, fail. F O L D, fouled. F I N E, fine. F O U N D, found. F O I L, foil. F E A R, fear. F A I R fair. F O U L foul. F O W L foul. S A F E safe. Look at the diphthong. Safe. A E is the diphthong used. L O A F love. It's not loaf, it's love. O is the diphthong used. H A L F half. F A T H E R, father. F A M O U S, famous. Famous. The tongue is used there. F I C K L E, fickle. F I S H, fish. F I N I S H, finish. F U R T H E R, 
further, further. That's right. Repeat the slide and pronounce it for more than two times for a good practice of it. The counterpart of fur is called as that's right, as in van. The articulation for f as well as v is the same, excepting that for v, the vocal cords vibrate, thereby making it voiced. So the soft palate is raised to shut off the nasal passage of air. The lower lip comes very close to the upper lay teeth to form a narrow uh, space through which the air coming from the lungs passes out with the audible friction. The vocal cords vibrate during the articulation of the sound. So the three term label for v is voiced because the vocal cords vibrate, labiodental, the lower lip and the upper teeth come close to each other, fricative because the air passes through the small gap between them with audible friction. Distribution wise, it occurs in all the three positions in English words, word initial, word final and word medial position. As you find in the examples of VET, vet, a veterinary doctor, the clipped form of veterinary doctor is called as vet, which would mean uh, uh, a doctor who treats the animals. N-E-V-E-R, never. And L-E-A-V-E, leave, leave. The examples for this will be for those words which begin with the letter V. V-E-A-L, veal. V-E-T, vet. V-A-N, van. V A M P vamp, V E N O M venom poison, V E T E R A N veteran. So practice for a better pronunciation. The diagrammatic representation of fur and ver could be shown in that way, as you could find the soft palate is raised to shut off the nasal passage of air. Yes, and so the air coming out from the lungs has to pass through the mouth, and in the mouth also you could find a small narrow gap that is left between the lower lip and the upper teeth. Hence, it is labio and dental. The next uh, sound is th. Now, we have uh, th, 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 th in our language. But when we pronounce th, 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 it's a plosive. Now, you understand what a plosive is. We completely close. The both the lips come closer to each other and in between the teeth you could find the tongue that is kept. Agree with that? Both the teeth are together and the tongue is in between and then you pronounce the. So it is tum, tehsil, you know, takdeer. So you close it. So the tongue is present between both the teeth and then it becomes a plosive sound and the oral cavity is closed and slowly you know, after the release of both the teeth, the tongue gets separated and as a result of which the air goes out in Hindi or in Marathi. But in English, it is not a plosive, it's a fricative. By fricative, we mean that a small gap is to be left so that the air that is coming out from the lungs has to pass through it with audible friction. So, it is not th, but it is Yes, both keep both the teeth together. The tongue should be between both the teeth. Slightly maybe the tongue could touch the upper teeth. Slightly. And just remove it. And then the air has to pass through it continuously with audible friction. That's right. So the soft palate is raised to shut off the nasal passage of air for the articulation of the sound. Both the teeth come closer and the tip of the tongue makes a slight contact with the upper teeth, then leaves and leaving a narrow space in between through which the air that is coming out from the lungs passes out with audible friction. The vocal cords are drawn wide apart during the articulation of the sound and hence the sound has the three term label of th as in theater is voiceless, dental, fricative. Occurring in all the three word positions in English. As you find in the examples, T-H-I-N, thin. It is not thin, it is thin. P-A-T-H-S, paths. It is not paths, but it is paths. And finally, it is B-A-T-H, bath. It is not bath, bath. So, 
So make it a bit lighter and see that the air passes through it and a fricative attitude is maintained and your pronunciation would be right. Let's practice for some examples. T H E M E, theme. T H I N, thin. T H E F T, theft. T H A N K, thank. So it's not thank, it is thank. Many a times for the native speakers, we don't even pronounce it as, we don't even hear it as thank, but it is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. T H O N G, thong. T H O U G H T, thought. T H U M B, thumb. T H I R D, third. T H E R M O M E T E R, thermometer. 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 That's right. T H R double E three. T H W A R T thought. H E A T H Heath. S M I T H Smith. So it is not Smith, but it is Smith. B R E A T H breathe. B A T H breath. Sorry, bath. N O R T H North. T U R U T H truth. B I R T H bird. B O T H mouth. M O U T H mouth. M E T H O D method. Medial position. A U T H O R author. S Y M P A T H Y sympathy. E T H E R ether. T H I R T Y thirteen. T H O U S A N D thousand. Thousand, thousand, that's right. T H I N G S, things. T H I R S T, thirst. T H R O B, throb. And T H U D, thud. Practice many times so that the sound will be reverberating in your ears and you can pronounce it better. The next sound that we have is a counterpart of the the. Mm. Mm. As in bother. The logic remains the same. The fricative attitude is to be shown for the production of the sound. So the soft palate is raised to shut off the nasal passage of air. Both the teeth come closer and the tip of the tongue makes a light contact with the upper teeth and leaves a narrow space in between through which the air that is coming out from the lungs passes out with audible friction. The vocal cords vibrate during the articulation of the sound. Hence, the three-term label for describing the sound is voice because the vocal cords vibrate, dental because both the teeth are involved in the production of the sound and fricative because a narrow gap is left in between the teeth so that the air that is coming out from the lungs passes through it with audible friction. The sound also occurs in word initial, word medial and word final positions in English. As you find in the examples, THI is this. So it's not this, it is this. Pronounce it slightly. See the fricative nature is maintained and don't pronounce her sound here. It's not aspirated. Many of, especially the Marathi speakers have the habit of pronouncing it as this, there, those. In spite of the fact that her sound is there, her remains silent there and maintain the fricative nature of the so that the pronunciation will be a bit lighter and more like an RP. So it is this. R-A-T-H-E-R, rather. Now the American pronunciation is rather. British pronunciation RP is rather. B-A-T-H-E, bathe. Bathe. Practice for more examples. T-H-E-S-E, these. T-H-I-S, this. T-H-E-N, then. T-H-A-T, that. T H E was this. S C Y T H E, tithe. T H E Y, they. T H O U G H, thou. T H Y, thy. T H O U, though. T H D E R E, there. F A T H E R, father. B R E A T H E, breathe. W I T H, with. B A T H E, Bathe, L O A T H E, Loathe, 
loath w o r t h y worthy b r o t h e r brother brother note that all these words we pronounce with a slight indianized touch i don't say it is wrong absolutely acceptable as long as they are understandable but when we are learning phonetics as far as possible learn the right pronunciation and try to apply this in the pronunciation of all the words so t h e s e these this then that thus they thy avoid such type of pronunciation make it fricative and see that the her sound is not pronounced because it is it doesn't have any aspiration here the diagrammatic representation of her and her can be seen as following you could see that the tongue is in between both the teeth the soft palate is raised to shut off the nasal passage of air and the air that is coming out from the lungs is passing through the narrow gap that is present between both the teeth and the tongue together thereby making it fricative sound and because both the teeth are involved the sounds are called as dental sounds her is voiceless dental sound whereas the is voiced dental sound thank you very much for being a part of this video which is on fricatives part 1 in which we deal dealt with four fricative sounds for v both these are labiodental and th and z both these are dental practice the sounds and words for a better understanding of these stay tuned for the next videos bye for now